Meanwhile, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has escalated his war of words with President Trump, threatening to, quote, take the highest level of response to Trump's words at the UN General Assembly. According to Pyongyang's top diplomat, that response could be a hydrogen bomb test in the Pacific Ocean. A menacing message from Kim Jong-un on Friday. The North Korean leader vowing to make Donald Trump pay for threatening to destroy his country at the UN. The United States has great strength and patience. But if it is forced to defend itself or its allies, we will have no choice but to totally destroy North Korea. In the first direct message ever made by a North Korean leader, Kim calls the U.S. president mentally deranged, threatening to tame him with fire, and saying he's considering, quote, the highest level of countermeasure in history. We'll catch up with North Korea's foreign minister in New York. NHK's camera was there, and here's that exchange. <laughs> Respected Supreme Leader Comrade Kim Jong Un, the Chairman of the State Affairs Commission of the DPRK, issued a statement. He stated that he will take unprecedented, toughest ever countermeasure against the speech made by Trump. What kind of measure it will be, I don't really know, because it will be done by a chairman of the State Affairs Commission of the DPRK. But I might guess that our chairman of the State Affairs Commission has a decision to conduct strongest ever hydrogen bomb test in the Pacific Ocean. Kim's threat may be typically vague, but claims of what it could mean are chilling. The North's foreign minister suggesting that Pyongyang could hit back with a hydrogen bomb test over the Pacific. Today I'm announcing a new executive order I just signed that significantly expands our authorities to target individuals, companies, financial institutions that finance and facilitate trade with North Korea. The states and the tit-for-tat rhetoric between the U.S. and North Korea have been raised once again. North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un released a statement on Friday condemning U.S. President Trump's speech at the U.N. General Assembly where he threatened to totally destroy North Korea if forced to defend itself or its allies. Kim said instead of making any remarks that could have diffused tensions, Trump spouted unprecedented rude nonsense that caused worldwide concern. He called Trump mentally deranged and a dotard, meaning a senile old person. Kim said the U.S. president had insulted him and the regime and pledged to take the highest level of hardline countermeasures. The statement is an unprecedented escalation in rhetoric. It's believed to be the first time Kim, or any of his predecessors for that matter, has made such a statement in person on state media. However, despite this new precedent, one expert says it didn't come as a total surprise. Kim's grandfather and father, Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il, were charismatic and had authority. They wouldn't have dealt with this kind of situation themselves. They wouldn't have needed to. But Kim Jong-un's grip on authority is much weaker, so he has to show a strong response to Trump's comments. It just shows his limits. North Korea's top diplomat, Ri yong ho who was in New York for the UN General Assembly, was asked about Kim's statement. 
In relation to Trump's thoughtless words, he said he would take the highest level of countermeasures. I believe that could be a test of our most powerful hydrogen bomb in the Pacific Ocean. Pyongyang already carried out a nuclear test earlier this month, which it claimed to be an H-bomb. But a detonation in the Pacific Ocean would be considered a massive step in provocations, especially as it would be outside of North Korea's borders. But for now, experts are skeptical such tests will come any time soon. I believe they are technically capable of carrying it out, but I think it should be seen as an introduction to a new threat car on the U.S. They are first more likely to continue test firing Hwasan-14 ICBM missiles into the Pacific and then later use that to make further threats about testing an H-bomb there. And quite recently we have seen the provocation coming from the North Korea and uh, the Japanese people must have gone through the huge, a big shock and uh, I really understand that the big concerns, the huge concerns that Japanese people may have uh, because of these provocations. So I like to express uh, the, uh, that I really um, feel the, for the compassion for the Japanese people in this regard. The, the three leaders uh, have met at the, the G20 summit meeting in July in Germany and we issued a joint statement. And uh, through this joint statement, uh, we also uh, set uh, a firm foundation for close coordination amongst the three countries, uh, based on which we are co uh, cooperating closely with the international community uh, to impose the sanctions and the pressure on the North Korea. And uh, through the UN the General Assembly, the, the three leaders uh, have come together. The, we all uh, had made speeches at the, the General Assembly, and also the, uh, we met with um, uh, leaders of the major countries at the bilateral, and we were able to the enhance understanding about the, this, uh, the, the sanctions, and we were also able to urge to the international community to, uh, about uh, this uh, situation. I think this is an outcome, the, um, that meaningful outcome that uh, the three countries have made. Uh, President Trump just talked about uh, the executive order uh, through which uh, the, the U.S. is going to be implementing uh, sanctions on the, um, against the DPRK. And also there is a major uh, announcement made by the China the, uh, to take actions on the DPRK. I am uh, very uh, confident that uh, this, such moves will contribute to complete denuclearization of uh, DPRK. In this, I'd like to extend my appreciation to uh, President Trump. and. Uh, I'd like to say that uh, Korea will uh, closely coordinate uh, with the United States uh, on this matter. Uh, through today's meeting, I sincerely uh, hope that, that there will be uh, a display of strong trilateral leadership in coordinating our responses for the North Korean issue. And I also look forward to, to engaging in uh, in-depth discussions uh, for the solution to North Korean nuclear and missile problem. Thank you. Prime Minister Abi. In the last three weeks, uh, two times uh, North Korea launched ballistic missiles, uh, two times going over Japan, and they conducted six nuclear tests, and the scale of the test was beyond the scale of uh, Hiroshima bombs, more than 10 times the uh, scale of the te nuclear test was 10 times more. This is intolerable, outrageous act. Uh, Thanks to Donald's leadership, we now have at the summit meeting between Japan, U.S. and Korea. So uh, we, our unity and the solidarity, the strength thereof uh, could be presented to North Korea. This meeting is indeed quite uh, significant. I'd like to thank Donald's leadership. Recently, U.N. sanction was adopted unanimously, including a very strict uh, sanctions and I'd like to thank the uh, efforts of the U UN ambassadors uh, from the United States and the further efforts are needed and uh, in this context Donald just uh, referred to signing of the executive order new executive order so we are going into the uh, new stage of uh, pressure from the viewpoint of exercising stronger pressure, new pressures. Uh, the, uh, I welcome the new sanction measures of the United States and I'd like to offer my heartfelt support for that. Bearing in mind those measures between the three countries, uh, we will have the collaboration 
so that we will move toward the abandoning of nuclear uh, weapons and nuclear program by North Korea, and we'd like to lead into the next action. Thank you.